So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, it's another wonderful day again that uh, we uh, actually see uh, leaders of the church, that is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, with other Christian leaders actually joining in a conference. And I think uh, this was also uh, the conference, those are uh, the conference they were invited in an uh, NAACP uh, meeting. That is the first presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and uh, the leadership of the NAACP actually came together and they were addressing uh, some of the things that were very, very good. And I think just like the way President Nelson uh, had instructed in one of these conferences and he spoke of how to be a good neighbor. And uh, the other general authority that addressed this was Elder Rasband. And uh, please let us just listen to what Elder Rasband had, had actually to say. Well, good morning on this beautiful summer day to our friends in the media and others who have joined us this beautiful morning. Welcome. My name is Elder Ronald A. Rasband of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I am the chairman of the Church Communication Committee and President Russell M. Nelson, president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, has asked me to conduct this morning's press conference. In addition to President Nelson, we are joined by the counselors in the First Presidency, President Dallin H. Oaks and President Henry B. Eyring, and Elder Gary E. Stevenson of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, Elder Jack N. Girard, a General Authority 70 of the Church, who serves as Executive Director of Church Communications, and a number of our special guests, Derek Johnson, President and CEO of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, and his associates, Ara Sims, Chief of Staff, Yumika Rushing, Chief Strategy Officer, Will Colomb, Special Counsel to the NAACP President, Janetta Williams, President of the Salt Lake Branch of the NAACP. Also present with us is Dr. Michael L. Lomax, President and CEO of the United Negro College Fund and his associates, Senior Vice President Maurice Jenkins and Vice President Monica Suddeth. We warmly welcome the Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown of the Third Baptist Church of San Francisco and national board member of the NAACP. He is joined by his dear wife, Jane. Nice to have you here, Jane and many other dear friends. We welcome you all and are grateful for your presence. On May 17, 2018, the Church and the NAACP in this very room made a unified plea for greater civility and racial harmony. It was the solidifying of a growing friendship and the beginning of discussions about how we could learn from and serve one another. Since that time, we have labored together in the spirit of friendship and common purpose to find ways to increase understanding and to bless the lives of our black brothers and sisters throughout areas like education and humanitarian efforts. In the past three years, the Church and the NAACP have been engaged in self-reliance efforts in cities like Chicago, San Francisco, and others. While a global pandemic has impacted our ability to meet in person, we have been hard at work, and we are pleased to meet today in that same <clears throat> warm spirit to share now some joint initiatives that will take our progress to a new level. We will first be pleased and honored to hear from President Nelson, who will introduce the planned initiatives. He will be followed by Derek Johnson, Dr. Lomax and Reverend Brown, who will provide further details and insights on these efforts. I will then conclude our meeting. President Nelson. Today, understanding and deriving meaningful insights from data is fast becoming the most needed skill in the business world. 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the NAACP are two separate and distinct entities. One is an international church and one is a national association. Each has its own distinct mission. But members of these two organizations have one thing in common. They are believers. They believe in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. And they believe Jesus Christ who said, thou shalt love God with all thy heart and thy neighbor as thyself. These passionate beliefs motivate us to action. What do we do because of those beliefs? We call for greater civility and kindness, and we work together to bless the lives of God's children. I've spoken repeatedly on these objectives and do so again today. I renew our call to abandon prejudice and promote civility, kindness, and mutual respect. We seek to build bridges of cooperation instead of walls of segregation. In July 2019, it was my privilege to speak at the National Convention of the NAACP in Detroit. I will always remember their cordial welcome and the privilege of meeting so many of their faithful members from around the country. Since then, together with some of our esteemed colleagues, we authored a national op-ed message on how to build greater understanding, overcome prejudice, and decry the ugly sin of racism. Leaders of the church have found common ground with the NAACP as we have discussed challenges that beset some of God's children. We have considered specific things we might do to alleviate problems and improve the future of some who are currently in distress. We know our limitations. The challenges are huge and our capacities are limited. But together, we want to make a difference, even though our efforts may seem relatively small. Today, we are pleased to announce three key initiatives that have emerged from our many discussions and prayerful planning. First, educational scholarships overseen by the United Negro College Fund to help young black students in the United States. The church has made a commitment of $1 million a year for the next three years. Second, as part of our educational effort, I am pleased to announce a one-time donation of $250,000 to create an Amos C. Brown Student Fellowship to Ghana. This will allow selected students from the USA an opportunity to learn more about their heritage. Third, humanitarian efforts will be focused to bring relief to suffering souls in underprivileged areas of the United States. We will help to teach the important principles of self-reliance. We have committed $2 million per year for the next three years to encourage service and help to those in need. This is consistent with our many humanitarian efforts around the world for which our members have donated so generously. These efforts represent an ongoing desire of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to teach and live the two great commandments, to love God and neighbor. We are pleased to cooperate, collaborate with the NAACP on these opportunities. 
Finally, on this week of Juneteenth, a time designated to, remem to remember the end of slavery in the United States, we are honored to join with our dear friends from the NAACP and the UNCF to announce these goals and our shared vision. May God bless us all in these efforts as we seek to bless the lives of those in need. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Christians, did you know the Bible holds the secret to crystal clear 2020 vision without Thank you, President Nelson, and thank the First Presidency for this opportunity. I'm Derek Johnson, President and CEO of the NAACP. We are honored to continue this partnership with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was just three years ago when we decided to embark on building a relationship, understanding that we must be a friend before we need a friend, and that we all need friends, therefore we have to be friends. For me personally, it is driven by those two great commandments. Love thy God with all thy mind and thy heart, and love thy neighbor as oneself. And as a community who have experienced extreme polarization and otherness in this country, we also understand that other communities have also suffered as a result of the dominant culture creating otherness. But as I once heard a minister talk about moving about on the continent of Africa in a particular village, he couldn't remember the name and he heard the greetings. When individuals seen each other, regardless of their walk of life, they greeted with the saying, I see the Christ in you. Think about that saying that if we are true believers and we can see one another, we can see the Christ in one another, we can start from a place of being open and understanding. Start from a place to appreciate one's uniqueness as their genius and appreciate the need to collectively put all of our geniuses together because God created all of us in his image. It is an opportunity for me also to be proud in this moment with the announcement as a graduate of a UNCF school to know that this community value the genius of our young people in the way in which they're going to support and invest in our young, talented minds across the country. The UNCF is an important institution in the African-American community. Many of the people who are here today, whether they're with the UNCF or NAACP, are graduates of UNCF schools. But most importantly, in this environment, where people seek to create otherness and tribalism, that we can stand here today as a beacon of light to communities where people can look and say, I see the Christ in them. An opportunity to really embrace our uniqueness an opportunity to really appreciate who we are as God people. And so I'm also proud to stand here as we name one of the most profound programs that we're going to embark on under the historian of our board, Amos Brown. That we're able to take young people back to Ghana in recognition of that evil voyage of the transatlantic slave and began to instill upon young people the importance of who they are, how they ended up here in their role in furthering a more inclusive society. This is a proud moment for the NAACP, an organization that is national in scope historic in nature, but people-centered in reality. And in this community, Janetta Williams is the person that continue to make sure that the NAACP is alive and well. And for that, Janetta, I thank you. 
We are the church, we are the NAACP, we are God's people. This announcement today can allow us to stand proudly together from various backgrounds, from various communities, from across the country, so others can really say, I see the Christ in them. Thank you. The best prayer to attract wealth begins when you understand that the strongest energy in the universe is not thought. Med Good morning, President Nelson, members of the First Presidency, distinguished guests, uh, friends all, I'm Michael Lomax, President and CEO of the United Negro College Fund. And it's my honor to be here this morning to join with my very good friend, the president of the NAACP, and my new friend, the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, in today's announcement. You know, um, this has been a particularly challenging last 15 months for most Americans and people all across the globe. It's been a time of fear. It's been a time of solitude and separation from the ones we love. And at times, it's been a, a period of hopelessness. But because of the hard work of so many, we find ourselves in a new day with a new beginning and new opportunities to reconnect with those we know and we love and to meet others who have shared this period with us and now have a new sense of opportunity to act and to engage in ways that we didn't have the opportunity to do before. So I'm particularly excited that I am here today in behalf of the United Negro College Fund to join in partnership with the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints and the NAACP in these three bold and important initiatives that will do so much to end this sense of marginalization and separation and pronounce our commitment to cooperation, partnership, shared humanity, and love. The United Negro College Fund for 77 years has supported first generation low income students realize their dream of a college education. We've raised over $5 billion and helped over 500,000 students become the first in their families to educate from, to, to graduate from college. Now, in partnership with the NAACP and the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, we will begin a new initiative that is a shared initiative to help young people who have not had the opportunity to get a great education, to get the foundational skills required for good careers, enriched lives, building community, and exercising leadership. I want to thank our new partners. I want to commit that UNCF will engage in this work not as a financial transaction, but as a transformational partnership. Why? Because we all share one common belief, and that is that a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing 
to invest in. Thank you, and God bless you all. Good morning. Good morning. To President Nelson. My brother of another mother. <laughs> to all the members of the First Presidency, and to my President and Chief Executive Officer and his staff, Brother Derek Johnson, Brother Lomax, a Morehouse man, and to our president of our branch here in Salt Lake, Ms. Janetta Williams. And to my bosom pal, Elder Jack Gerard. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press corps, I am humbled and very much, believe it or not, speechless. <laughs> but if I could put this occasion in words, I would say, for all that's been done here today and what has been established as an honor to me of naming the Hamas C. Brown scholars who will go to Ghana, West Africa and have that once-in-a-lifetime experience of witnessing that horrible, inhumane slave system but not to become bitter over it, but to become agents of betterment so that we will be able to make real amends for that tragic, horrible Atlantic slave trade. So, on a positive note, I would say I am peacock proud, hyena happy, and elephant elated. Why? Because President Nelson, you and I locked arms in Detroit above two years ago. And I want to acknowledge in my remarks that you are the quintessential embodiment of the best leadership in the faith community of the United States of America, anywhere to be found south of heaven, north of hell. And you are the reincarnation of one Joseph Smith, who back in April the 6th, 1830, had a vision for a spiritual community. 
And that vision was not egocentric, self-centered, or nationalistic. That vision was about love for all humankind. For many in America do not know that Joseph Smith was a leader of the abolitionist movement in upstate New York, at Fayette, New York. And Joseph Smith ran for the presidency of the United States of America in 1844. And his major plank in his platform was the abolition of slavery by 1850. He actually predated Abraham Lincoln in his efforts. He actually had the spirit also that it was embodied in the great Frederick Douglass who spoke about the struggle that all decent believers following Jesus should be a part of. And that was to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with one's God. So, friends, before I take my seat, remember to remind you now that it's late in the evening in these United States of America. Our democratic Republic is under siege, but this very partnership of the NAACP and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will be the saving factor to redeem the soul of the United States of America so that we shall indeed become one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That is our goal, that is our focus, and I thank God that God enabled me at the age of 80 to stand here for this historic moment to say to America, look at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, look at the NAACP, for if you take what they use of love, civility, justice, and peace, you won't lose. Well now, Dr. Brown, I truly am speechless. <laughs> Our dear friend, thank you for that stirring message. Thank you, President Nelson, and Derek, and Dr. Lomax. We appreciate your presence and your words and your actions here today. We will now excuse the First Presidency to attend to other obligations, and then Elder Jack Gerard will serve as a moderator for media questions. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, you can see what exactly the church is doing. The church is bringing harmony and it is bringing empowerment to people who are actually underprivileged. And you can see, like, uh, I did not know what N. Double ACP really means, but now after following up, that is when I understand what it really is. And uh, you can see what the church is doing. Uh, it's actually partnering uh, with, with, with people, communities, and organizations to ensure that uh, those who are underprivileged or those who never had an opportunity uh, of, of receiving you know, certain opportunities like education and all that, they are able actually to do that. You know, and uh, and uh, and it's it's quite amazing. Uh, you know, when I was listening to this, and I kind of like figure out uh, some of the statements are people will speak about the church because they do not know 
or they don't understand what the church is all about. And at times I would feel, I would feel very pity of them, you know, and uh, you'll find this is a people who will tell you that the church is only for, you know, it is undermining black people or wherever, things like those ones, which are, uh, very, very, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very backward, let me so, so to speak, very backward when somebody will start, you know, reasoning or classifying the church based on the racial issues. But now you can see what exactly the church is doing here. In fact, these people who are being helped, they are actually from the re black communities. And, uh, and the church is actually has partnered with the NAACP, and uh, what is called the United Negro Fund, wherever, uh, it has partnered with that so that to ensure that young black communities do actually receive the necessary education that they were not actually, you know, uh, didn't, they didn't have an opportunity of receiving that education. Now, look at it this way again. The church also has partnered with these communities to ensure that uh, the, 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 the black people in, in, in America actually have an have a privilege of you know understanding their history by taking a trip back to Ghana once a year for them to understand where they are coming from can you imagine for them to understand where they are coming home and when they go to Ghana I wish they had an opportunity just to go to other areas because they are quite apart from Ghana they are quite other areas you know over the same same thing called slavery and shipment really happened. Those castles are almost everywhere, you know. And uh, the church has chosen Ghana, like these communities, this partnership has chosen Ghana to ensure that these blacks who maybe may not actually uh, be able to understand their history, what their, you know, what their, their forefathers did, what their forefathers actually went through, you know. When they go there, they will have that connection and understand what their forefathers actually really went through. And once you understand that, it will do something in your head. It will actually do something in your head. It will change your mind. It will change your mind. And I think that was a a great thing that uh, this partnership has come up with and, and, and I'm assuring that is one way of empowering uh, the black community and uh, ensuring that uh, they actually uh, uh, have a sense of, of belonging and, and, and they understand themselves better because I do understand that uh, most of the time if you really don't understand yourself you may not actually realize what life is all about I served with one of the missionary who was actually from uh, the black community. Uh, he was actually in, uh, was he from California, Elder Kwam? Yeah, he was from California. And uh, I served with him while I was in Uganda, Ginger. That was in 2001. I, that is when I cleared my mission, 2001, when September 11th was just, you know, America was being attacked, you remember? Uh, that is when I was coming back home uh, for my mission. So I, Elder Kwam happened to be my last companion. I used to call them my last born because he was the last companion I had when now I was clearing my mission. And uh, I used to look at him and sometimes when the way he is, I will end up realizing that uh, there are a lot of things this guy has gone through or there are a lot of psychological things that this brother is going through. And at times we will just sit during our PDs and try to, you know, discuss. And I will explain to him the history, how all these things used to happen. And, and uh, during PDs at times we will go even to a cyber and try to check a few things. Uh, you know, he was asking me some of the things and I, I kind of like with my little contribution, I tried to help him understand what exactly it was all about. And uh, lastly, I remember when he went home, he actually wrote me a letter and he told me, thank you very much for what you played a big role, you know, in shaping my, my mind and shaping my way of understanding things. And, 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 and I think that is a greatest uh, opportunity when these people are actually brought back to Africa. They go to Ghana and go through those dungeons 
they will really understand what exactly their forefathers went through. And that is when now somebody will start changing their mind and perception of how they view life. Otherwise, thank you very much. I am so glad to be here. Otherwise, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward also to see you again next time. Thank you.